Pat, this stage of your career, this, this must be a, a very satisfying one to sign, because I suppose most people don't expect to get this far into a career, this long a career. Yeah, I guess so. It probably hasn't really crossed my mind about satisfaction or relief or any of those types of emotion. In a way, it's, it was almost matter of fact in the end, um, albeit that it does take something that took a lot of consideration given my age and the, the amount I've been playing and um, where the club's at. So uh, in the end, it, uh, it seemed that way, but yeah, it, uh, it probably a bit different to the other decisions I've made with my contract over the years. How's the body feeling? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, that's certainly a part of the decision-making process. And, you know, at the end of last year, after having really interrupted season last year, surgeries and some other sort of niggles along the way. So um, if my body wasn't in the condition it is in um, right now, then I, I wouldn't consider playing on. Um, if I wasn't able to train every week and, and therefore go and play, uh, it's a big part of, of the whole decision-making process, being able to train and then play. Often still see whether they win a flag with the club and then decide to hang up boots or anything. That wasn't a consideration for you, obviously. Well, not really. The club came to us, you know, early in the season and sort of said, "How are you feeling? How's the body? And and is the mind willing to go for another season?" And um, I took some consideration. You know, took some time to discuss it with Lauren and a few other people. And um, you know, as the year has progressed, although. I'm not, I don't want to underestimate the consideration um, that I, I put in place and that I, I took. But yeah, if my body and mind was willing, um, I'd commit to another year. And, and if the club's happy with that and I'm happy with that, then um, it was sort of a pretty easy decision from there. How important was the pre-season? You said during the time, I think, that it was one of your best pre-seasons in three or four years. How important was that in terms of where you're at now and moving forward for another season? Like yeah, so it's the off-season training phase, being able to maintain fitness, um, you know, not having surgery, all those things is, is vital, but the pre-season is, is critical and um, yeah, I was able to have a, a pretty strong pre-season and that would be the focus, hopefully on the back of this season, to, to maintain a healthy body, train well and, and then propel into next year. Did the quality of that pre-season, you said in the release that you were thinking that maybe this would be your last year, did, did that change your mind? Well, I get, I mean, I th you know, once you get to 32 and over 300 games, um, it's negligent to think any further than one game ahead. <laughs> so, um, you know, at the start of this year, you sort of enter it as thinking, well, this may be it, who knows, we'll wait and see what happens. But I keep coming back to if my mind and body are willing, then I'll keep fronting up. So was there a temptation to maybe leave it to the end of this year, until, of this season, until you decided to go on again? Or? It's not something that I really gave a huge amount of consideration. Once the club came to us and said, you know, where are you at? Where's your head at? And we started discussing it. Um, it was more about progressing it from there as compared to, look, let's wait and see. Um, yeah, I, th I think that, and the fact that sort of answer. Yeah, <laughs> no, but the fact that it looks like this club's in for success for the next couple of years, do you think if, if they're at a different stage, you may have a it's certainly um, a nice place to come to every day to work, knowing that we've got a really driven group, um, we hold ourselves accountable, and there's strong leadership coming up underneath the incumbent. So um, that certainly makes my job a hell of a lot easier and an enjoyable place to come and work every day. So whilst that's the case, and whilst we're winning games of footy, and whilst the group is driving us, it, it makes the senior players' jobs um, you know, very rewarding. In terms of the captaincy, obviously, um, a long way to go, and obviously it's player voted, but while you're here next year, I mean, would you hold on to that position if, if it were available to you, or, or would you look to... We review that at the, at the end of every year and then heading into every pre-season, so, um, yeah, I'll obviously keep my spot for this point in time, and then we'll discuss that come year's end and, and into the pre-season. Um, you know, it is a player-driven thing, it's, it's voted upon, and... Um, it may look a, a whole lot different um, come November, December when we do it. Is it something though that you would consider maybe sort of handing the baton no over but, but still being there for another year? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, um, we have seen a huge amount of growth from players, both within the leadership group and outside of that. So um, if the group and the club thought it was time and, and it, was, it felt appropriate as well, absolutely happy to do that. 
Although your situation is clearly different, how did you feel when contemporaries like Darren Glass and yeah. Jonathan Brown retired this year? Yeah, uh, they, were, they were sharp reminders um, of the commitment that I'm making for another 12 months at the end of this season. So, you know, playing against those two um, and coming in the system at the same time, um, it sort of made me consider where I was at and what my thought process was. And it, again, sharpened uh, my focus on that. So, um, yeah, they, uh, they've they decided to, to hang them up. And I think for different reasons, it was you know, certainly appropriate for them. But um, I'm still committed. And as I said, my mind and body are willing. Classy said his mind and body was willing at the end of last year and then said at his retirement that in hindsight he's probably gone too long. Does that worry you at all? Well, I think it's, I'm a realist, I understand, and pragmatic to know that, um, you know, absolute perfect exits from the game are few and far between. So I'm pragmatic enough to understand that that could very well happen, but I'm certainly planning for it not to. Yeah, that's right, and, and I'm playing a part with those guys, Michael Apness and Matt Tabernar and a, and a few other younger players, um, a couple that I've been playing with for a few years now, so helping them develop and, and my role in all of that is important, um, and I understand that. So it's exciting for the club to see those guys out there, particularly Michael on the weekend and debut and, and playing the manner that he did. What are Michael's great strengths and what, what are the types of things you're expecting from him moving forward? Look, I think you even saw on the weekend in the, the half or so that he played that um, he competes really strongly, um, you know, he puts his body on the line and um, he's willing to work really hard. So um, that's the cornerstone of any good player and, and hopefully um, he's able to, to further that as he goes, learn more about the game as well. Your illness, you uh, was a bit flu or...? Yeah, I just came, so early in the week I had, I didn't train, uh, I think Tuesday I was crook and uh, I felt as though I actually overcame that train Thursday, flew up to Darwin and then woke up feeling um, horribly on Friday morning and um, sort of just rested all day in the hope that I'd sort of get better and sort of got moving on Saturday morning, ran around a bit and then um, just knew that I wasn't right. So I ended up flying back and seeing a part of the game when I got back to Perth. So it wasn't a great trip, to be honest, but it was great the guys got the result. How are you feeling now? Better. So on the men. Right, that's Sunday? Yeah. Oh, the two flights wouldn't have helped. <laughs> More frequent flight points. Um, oh, look, yeah, uh, potentially missing a game does help, but um, you know we got two buys now, so the body had been pretty good up to that point. Can you expand a little bit on the importance of Monday and Fire Free signing? I know it was mentioned in the release. Oh, incredibly critical to our success. Um, you know, two great leaders of our playing group, and um, Nat's obviously really emerged the last sort of twelve months. David's been. Um, you know, right up there in, in our eyes internally for a long time. So, um, you know, terrific that they're both committed to the club. It, I think it goes to show that um, we're doing quite a bit right here with our culture and our team accountability, and um, we're really driving each other to, to high standards. So it's um, it's incredibly satisfying to see those two stay for a further three years. Uh, five years having a, a good year. Gary Ablett's going to be out for probably, we still don't know, between four and six. and. Champion data worked out that he'd probably be the favourite to win the Brownlow medal. Um, awkward question for you, Matthew, but uh, how do you see his career at this stage and the season that he's having? He's had a terrific year again, Nathan. Um, I think he's even grown further in some aspects of the game that the coaches and players thought that he could improve in. And um, you know, he's a special talent. He's got great ball-winning ability inside, but can obviously run and jump and do all the, the great things the fans love. And um, you know, he's a terrific player for us and he's really developing his leadership so um, we're wrapped to have him for three years and he's some type of player. Um, just on GWS this weekend, it feels like the injury list is getting more healthy and guys are coming back. Can you sense that around the group that everyone's aware that there's going to be real competition for spots coming in the next few weeks? Or? Uh, you don't really sense it amongst the group. I think everyone's you know, pretty driven individually to, to play each week but Certainly, if you ask the guys individually, there would be that you know pressure on spots, and I think that's pretty healthy for the group. Um, we must only have three or four on the injury list at the moment, which Touchwood remains something similar to that. And the guys down at Peel um, all be 
it, they haven't necessarily got the results. Some of our senior types of guys down there have been doing a pretty good jobs, so um, I think it's healthy for the group.